Good afternoon. I'm delighted that you could join us today, both in person and online, to celebrate the outstanding recipients of the 2022 UBC Health Awards and Scholarships. I'd like to acknowledge that UBC Vancouver Point Grey campus is located on the traditional, ancestral and unceded territory of the Musqueam people, and the UBC Okanagan campus is located on the traditional, ancestral and unceded territory of the Silks Okanagan Nation. I would also like to recognise that UBC's activities take place in communities on the traditional territories of 203 First Nations and 38 Métis chartered communities. Each possess their own unique traditions and history on the land that we refer to as British Columbia, and I acknowledge the traditional guardians and caretakers of these lands. Before we begin with the awards presentation, I would like to say a few words about UBC Health. UBC Health works under the office of the Vice President Health. We recognize the growing need for collaborations to address complex and interconnected problems facing society. We facilitate partnerships across disciplines, faculties, campuses, health partners and communities. Our work enables us to improve the way that we collectively train people, develop knowledge and shape policy. Our ultimate goal is to address inequities and improve the systems that foster and support health. UBC is the largest educator of student health professionals in the province. The breadth and depth of our disciplines make the university uniquely placed to play a leading role in contributing to the health of people in British Columbia. We are seeing innovative change happening in our classrooms, in our practice settings, in our communities, and in our research areas. And the individuals and teams, both from within and outside of UBC, who are contributing to these successes, are doing so through collaboration and excellence in interprofessional education, practice, and health research. Every year, UBC Health offers a number of awards and scholarships to recognize outstanding individuals and teams who work within our system. Today, we recognize and celebrate the achievements of faculty, students, and partners who have demonstrated a commitment to collaborative health education and research. I would like to thank the faculty, students, and community members who sat on the UBC Health Awards Committee for their invaluable work and commitment to the awards review and selection process. I'd also like to thank the UBC Health staff for making this event possible. Congratulations to all of the recipients. And now, please welcome Dr. Christy Newton, Associate Vice President Pro Tem to the podium. Dr. Newton will be the MC for the evening. Thank you. academic and research excellence of faculty and students from various health disciplines at UBC. They also recognize the achievements of health professionals and community educators across British Columbia. Today, we are celebrating the 2022 recipients of the John McNeil Excellence in Health Research Mentorship Award, named in honor of Dr. John McNeil, former Dean of the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences for his outstanding leadership and mentorship, the John F. McCreary Prize for Interprofessional Teamwork, named in honor of Dr. John McCreary, the first coordinator of health sciences at UBC, who had a vision of interprofessional collaboration in education and practice to best meet the healthcare needs of British Columbians the R. Paul Kirsten Community Educator Award, named after longtime community educator Paul Kirsten to recognize educators who have made a difference to student learning. And I was delighted to meet Paul this evening. So Paul is here with us tonight. Uh, the Professor Jesse Gordon McCarthy Memorial Scholarship endowed by family, friends, and colleagues of the late Professor McCarthy, who contributed to the development of the health sciences at UBC, 
and the Impact BC Scholarships in Healthcare Research and Development, established by Impact BC, which was instrumental in advancing healthcare improvement and patient engagement in BC from 2000 to 2015. So for the first award, I'm now pleased to invite Dr. Larry Lynn to the podium to present our first award, the John McNeil Excellence in Health Research Mentorship Award. Dr. Lind is an Associate Dean Research Professor and Director of the Collaboration for Outcomes Research and Evaluation in the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences at UBC. Dr. Lind was also the recipient of the 2021 McNeil Award. And so we are delighted to have Dr. Lind introduce the 2022 recipient. Thank you, Christine, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm pleased to be here today to present the John McNeil Excellent Excellence in Research Award. I can say being in pharmaceutical sciences, John is a friend and a colleague, and I'm honored to be presenting it uh, on his behalf today. This prestigious award was established by the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences in uh, honor of Dean Emeritus John McNeil, whose leadership helped distinguish the faculty as one of, of one of Canada's best graduate programs and research environments paving the way for future excellence in research and research capacity in health at UBC. The, the, the award recognizes outstanding mentorship by faculty members who exemplify a deep commitment to fostering the professional and personal development of faculty colleagues, graduate students, and postdoctoral fellows in the early stages of their academic career. The 2022 recipient of the John McNeil Excellence in Health Research Award is Dr. Christopher Overall. <laughs> Dr. Overall is a full professor and Tier 1 Canada Research Chair Emeritus in the Centre for Blood Research, Department of Oral, Biological and Medical Sciences in the Faculty of Dentistry. He has developed an unparalleled research program in biochemistry and molecular immunology and drug target validation. He has developed a diverse, interdisciplinary, supportive training environment and mentored numerous junior faculty members, postdoctoral fellows, and graduate students, and fostered their educational, professional, and personal development. His mentorship is characterized by integrity, creativity, and fairness which has led his 40 trainees to achieve successful scientific careers, with 20 of them holding academic appointments across the world, presenting at international conferences, earning authorships, and holding joint patents. Dr. Overall inspires his students to become distinctive and skilled scientists who pursue ingenious projects and strive to be leaders in their fields. Congratulations, Dr. Overall. Please join me. <clears throat> I want to um, apologize to the, uh, the, 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 the staff member who emailed me the other day and said, uh, you, you've got to give some words here uh, at, the, at the presentation. And, and, and I said, OK, that's, that's, that's fine. And I knew I'd have to give a 20 minute talk. Now, don't, don't worry. <laughs> and I said, um, and, and she said, well, um, there's actually, it's only, only five minutes. And uh, I said, brother, prepared a 20 minute talk. She said, oh, that must be something else. So, so you're only going to get nothing actually from me today. But I just want to really, <laughs> I mean, it's interesting. I had to put a, a suit on and a tie the first time in three years of the pandemic. And it turns out that my neck's put on weight. So it's, <laughs> it's not just a belly that goes on in, in COVID. <laughs> so it's interesting having, having, having a necktie on. And uh, yes. But. Um, no, but thank you very much uh, to, 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 the, to the university, uh, to the awards committee, uh, to my past deans, uh, department heads, and most of all, to my, my trainees. You know, I came here 34 years ago and uh, from my, my PhD in Toronto, 
and drove across the country with my young family in a, a Volks, 78 Volkswagen bus. And I kept for 26 years, mostly going quite loudly, as those of you who know Volkswagen buses. It's great because you always, when you have you hit a, a mountain road, there's never any cars in front of you. It's great. You have lots of views. <laughs> the word's stuck behind you. <laughs> but it was great to come here. And I, so I really thank Mike Smith for having the faith to, to take me because um, I was a dental as a graduate originally. And then I did my PhD at U of T. So it was great to be in Mike's lab and then to be there uh, over the time that he actually won the Nobel Prize. Not because of me, but despite, despite me. <laughs> um, but I had fantastic deans along the way who just let me be. <laughs> and I think in my, my advice to, to young people who uh, are coming up through the academic ranks is when you get to become a, a departmental head or, or heaven forbid a dean, just you know, let, let people run and, and do their stuff. And, and that's what you want is time and, and not to feel obligated. And so I was able to devote the time then to my lab and, and to my students. And so, you know, whilst it's great to have an award and whilst it's great to have a nice publication list and, and awards and so on, it, it's, it's, it's because of other people and it's not just, not just me. And it's because of, of very supportive uh, deans and departmental heads and of course, the, um, the, the wonderful uh, students and postdocs I've had in my lab. And um, actually it's 60 I've, grad uh, I've had 40 postdocs and, and 20 students. And what, you know, my proudest stat I think is actually um, not the papers or the H index and, and, and awards and so on. What the proudest stat is that 20 of them, 20 of that, of that 60 are professors now. And you know, that's really fantastic. And, and and I get, you know, one of my, my, my tips to also to young scientists is, you know, when, you, when you're mentoring your kids, <laughs> um, you don't stop mentoring. You keep on going through the rest of your, your academic career and their careers. You know, a good three quarters of them can keep up with you quite regularly and the other quarter go their own way for a while. They often come back, you know, they wanted to show that they were, they were good too, right? Um, but that's a really fantastic, fulfilling aspect of, of work is to see young ones uh, do well and better. And, and, and I wrote a letter today for one of my guys who's at the University of Calgary uh, for an award. And you know, he's, done, he's, got, he's been had his appointment for uh, seven years now, plus the pandemic, <laughs> being dilated to the pandemic. He's got 45 papers, a couple in Cell and Nature. You know, he's doing really well. And so that that's, makes me feel really great. So just lastly, to, to the young ones, there's some young ones here, you know, tips for about mentoring. Don't take yourself seriously. <laughs> Everybody's pretty smart around here at a university and everyone has got ideas. And, and the trick is to, to listen and, and to learn also from your, your, your kids. Um, when they come to you, and, and the tears are flowing and, and, or, or there's some issues, whatever you do, you've got to take action that day. You know, send the email off, be seen to be doing, not be seen, do, do something about their concern. No matter how trite you may think it is, or, or millennial you may think it is, or how busy you are, or how many grants you've got to get finished that day, or, or other um, deadlines, you've got to deal with that. And think about happy then, because you actually, have taken them seriously and they can see that. So that's great. The other thing is just to take, um, have fun in your lab. Uh, humor is great. I mean, I'm Australian, but uh, some of us have a, <laughs> a warped sense of humor more than others. Uh, it goes over people's heads quite a lot, that's okay. <laughs> um, and um, so I, I, I think it's just, uh, yeah, so just to thank you to, to all of them. I, I guess really, you know, there's a nice uh, check, apparently, I've been told, that comes with, with this one day um, after the tax man and uh, with UBC's clawbacks and things, you know, I'll get something at the end of it. But I was wondering what I should do with this, you know, this mega dollars and, um, <laughs> and no, 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 it's, it's, it's serious money. <laughs> and uh, it's more than beer money. And so I, 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 I thought, actually, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna um, rip out my boiler Seriously, and um, uh, replace with a heat pump. And uh, the only thing we can do now, all of us, is to, we can't rely on the governments are hopeless and let us down. We've got to do it ourselves. And so 
I'm going to we're going to reduce our carbon footprint even more um, by the expensive process of rewiring, getting electrical into the, the house and uh, get rid of that CO2 point source. And for the future, you know, that's perhaps the best gift I can give back to them. So thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Oral. What wonderful words of wisdom. Um, and congratulations on your award. Um, so now on to our uh, second award. I'd like to welcome Drs. Angela Toll and Bill Godolphin, co-directors of the Patient and Community Partnership for Education at UBC Health, to present the R. Paul Kirsten Community Educator Award. The uh, R. Paul Kirsten Community Educator Award was named after a longtime community educator, R. Paul Kirsten, to honor outstanding community ed educators who have made a difference to student learning in health and human service programs at UBC. And the, uh, the special thing about this award is that um, the awardee is nominated by students. That's an essential component of it. Anyways, we're delighted, I think we're delighted, to have our Paul Kirsten walk up and greet us this evening. And I am going to invite him to come and say a few words. You know how many a few is, Paul? No, it's more than that, seven. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Well, thank you for that beautiful introduction. And um, I find myself rather emotional, actually, to be here. Um, and I'm very privileged to have an award in my name. But this is today not about me. This is about Jory. This is about the people like Jory, who, as community educators, are helping to further the future of health education and helping people such as myself, Jory, my friend George, everybody in this room and well beyond. Because that, what I call a backstory of what's going on in your life is so much more than the clinical manifestations of whatever chronic condition a person may be living with. And it's something that I'm so grateful is acknowledged in the programs that are run here at UBC. I'm grateful to UBC for giving the space for the program. I'm particularly grateful to both Drs. Toll and Godolphin for having the vision to run this program and to research manager Kathy Klein. And for those who know me, this is, I guess, a little bit of a joke, but it's not meant to be. My hat is off to you, Jory. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. The 2022 recipient of the R. Paul Kirsten Community Educator Award is Jory Mitchell. Come up. Thank you, Jory. And you can stand there while I read out all the wonderful things that oh, really? the nomination has said about you. As Bill said, the um, nominations for the Kirsten Award are made by students, and I'm going to read some of the extracts from the nomination um, that um, indicate why Jory is a deserved recipient of the award. Jory has been a passionate community educator with UBC Health for eight years. Through his involvement with the UBC Interprofessional Health Mentors Program, Patient and Community Voices Workshops, Living Library, and the Integrated Curriculum. He imparts his knowledge and wisdom as a caregiver with humility, kindness, compassion, and humor. He talks to students about the challenges as well as positive encounters within the healthcare system, recognizing the value for students to hear both perspectives. Jory consistently engages with students, asks thought-provoking questions, and encourages our future health professionals to advocate for improved care. He emphasizes the importance of recognizing autonomy and individuality in patient care and the need for interprofessional collaboration. 
Jory inspires students to develop new ways to collaborate using each other's strengths and across practice areas, and to consider how to be better practitioners with a goal to improve healthcare on both individual and systems levels. I will show you the award. Um, this is Jory's name. Uh, we've had so many deserved recipients of this award that we filled the first plaque. So we're on to our second plaque. And we've increased the number of leaves, anticipating that we're going to have even more deserved um, winners in the next uh, few years. So congratulations, Jory. Um, please accept this award and the certificate. And we have to organize uh, the three of us with you in the middle. And you can hold the award and Bill will open the certificate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's really easy, Andrew. We've done so many times, you know exactly what to do. Perfect. Got it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And I'd like you to say a few words. Thank you. Just a few words. Just yeah. a few. Yeah. Just a few words. Thank you. Thank you. Part of me when I came in, I was thinking about, honestly, am I in the right room? Um, I served on the awards committee um, for this group, two years running, and I encountered uh, via applications, uh, submissions, superhumans, people who had drive, commitment, heart, um, faithfulness. They impressed me so much. Um, hundreds of pages I, I got to read through. And I couldn't believe that these kind of people actually existed. And they were right here at, at UBC. And then I thought, and what have I been doing? Hmm. Um, okay, so I get the request and I say yes, and I just go speak and I'm done. But uh, these other superhumans are so impressive. And uh, I'm just delighted to be part of this to hear more uh, about their work and what they've been doing through the years. Um, I was a teacher in Port Alberni uh, for 33 years. I was married to Robin, who ended up having uh, Alzheimer's disease. And I became her caregiver upon retirement at 57 years old. As a teacher, I could do that. And I was her caregiver for 10 years. It was quite an experience. I learned so much. In the Alzheimer's Society, I was part of a support group and I heard about the mentoring program. And I thought, I've learned so much stuff. I would love to pass this information on to others who could benefit by it. So I applied and the uh, fellow who um, interviewed me said, well, congratulations, you, you've had the most words of anyone in an application that I've ever received. So uh, I'm, I'm forewarning you. Okay. Oh, I forgot to set the timer, D, I'm on. Anyway. I think what I can bring to the table is exactly what Paul said. We bring something different. It's not about all the mechanical, the, the working through of all the, the workings of the body and, and fixing and all of that stuff. For me, the heart matters. Part of it is in this campus, we deal with the hearts, the, the physical hearts, but we caregivers, we deal with the other heart. Uh, I have a block of wood, and if you took this block, put it up against the wall and shone a light on it, it would cast a shadow of a square. But if I turned it 90 degrees, did the same thing, it would cast a shadow of a circle. And then if I moved it 90 degrees in another direction, it would cast a shadow of a triangle. Can you envision that block? All three are realities of this block. This is the block. Circle, square, triangle. If you saw the triangle, you would swear that that is a triangle. And you're not going to have your mind changed. 
but if you saw the square, you'd be arguing with the person. And then one more chimes in and says, no, 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 you're both wrong, I see the circle. One of the things that's been great about being involved in this work is in this interdisciplinary part is we get to hear the voices of many others. I love hearing the stories of the students. I've been able to have a, a little bit of a glimpse into their lives. To hear their stories changes what they say. It gives me context and understanding. When uh, my wife went into care, um, she, um, we had to fill out the forms and I got a manual from the care facility and I gave them a manual entitled, Who is Robin? And it talked about her childhood, it talked about uh, food she likes, it, uh, her schooling, brilliant woman. Uh, it talked about her love life, it talked about the difficulties she had at home, it talked about marriage, children, it talked about her community involvement, her work as a teacher. Then it talked about her Alzheimer's. And it talked about how the disease continued on. Many people who go into facilities don't know reality and they do a lot of talking, but you don't know what is truth. The staff all read it, which was shocking to me. Many wept. They knew my wife before they even met her. One of them took it to heart, care aid. Twice I walked into the room and the care aid was dancing with my wife. You see, she taught dance as part of her music program. The look of ecstasy on my wife's face was beautiful. I almost wept. They knew my wife, they knew her heart, and they treated her as one of a friend and be able to love her as she is as a person. Oh, she has Alzheimer's, but Robin is Robin first. She is not a disease. There was a man who would uh, during music therapy, he would be doing this the whole time, walking back and forth on the stage. Boy, did it bug me. Of course, as a teacher, I like order. Uh, this was not order. I went up on the line where my, my wife was living, and uh, one of the workers there said to me, Oh, um, you don't know him, do you? I didn't know. Oh, he's the front man for a well-known BC band. What do they do? They're keeping the beat. They're in front of the audience all the time. John was being John. If I'd have known that, I'd have had a different attitude and my attitude changed immediately. When I would go into care conferences once a year, they would invite all the caregivers, care partners of my wife, including me and my two daughters. And we heard from the music therapist, we heard from the doctor, we heard from the executive who ran the facility. We talked and listened to everyone there and they listened to each other and they had a view of the triangle, this and that. We heard the whole of Robin. I love being there. And everyone was invited and welcomed joyfully to be able to share their perspective. And this is what I'm seeing more and more here at UBC people intercollaborating so that they could hear each other's perspectives. I also believe in the law of echoes. As a teacher of 13,000 students over the years, every class I want to talk to them about the law of echoes. How you treat others is how they treat you. If you come to them with a smile, usually they smile back. If you come with a scowl, well, they usually scowl back. I was in a support group meeting and there was a woman there who continually complained about the staff at the facility where her husband was being cared for. She felt it was a responsibility to complain. And I thought I'd hate to be a staff member in that facility. So at the facility my wife was in, I decided that I would complain once a year. So I had to be very careful to pick out the right one at the right time. The rest of the time, I tell them how wonderful they were, that they were doing a work that I don't know how they do it, but they did it and their commitment was beautiful. I absolutely loved it. Well, there was one woman who needed speaking to. She wasn't treating my wife the way I thought she ought to be treated. She wasn't connecting with Robin. So I knew I had to talk to her. So I took her aside one evening and I said, I have to tell you, I love how you care about your job. I love how you 
try to be the best person you can. Thank you for your commitment to my wife. I really do appreciate it. And that was it. She became a wonderful caregiver of my wife because I honored her. And it's hard for us to do that because we want to fix people all the time. But if you try to meet them at their hearts, they change in how they respond to you. And as professionals, I encourage you, if you are a professional in the healthcare system, meet people where their hearts are. I want to just finish quickly with thank yous. Um, Alzheimer's Society, they were amazing for me. But also, this place. Um, you took a chance on me. My, my interviewer, sitting right there. Um, he took a chance on me. Angela, Bill, Kathy, Jen took a chance on me with their students that I could be trusted to encourage them. Thank you so much for uh, taking a chance on me. I have to thank my, my wife, Robin, who was there all the way through and letting me fumble and stumble and, and whatever. But she loved me and respected me and encouraged me all the way along. A beautiful lady to care for. My current wife, we're both former caregivers and we met each other. Amazing woman, you gotta go meet this woman. She's sad, just anyway, okay. And um, finally, just thank the Lord. We're Christians and I just love what God did in my heart through uh, going through the valley of the shadow of death. Um, I just want to leave you, uh, given that I'm a Christian, there's one passage that I wanted to just briefly make reference to. Uh, it's in Philippians. It says, finally, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is reputable, uh, whatever is lovely, if there's any excellence or anything worthy of praise, let your minds dwell on these things, and the peace of God will be with you. Keep positive. Thank you. Thanks, Jory. And you can tell from the words that he shared this evening uh, about his passion and dedication to student mentorship and health education. So thank you for all that you've done, Jory. Now I'd like to invite Donna Drynan, Director of Education for UBC Health, to the podium to present the student scholarships, the Professor Jesse Gordon McCarthy Memorial Scholarship and the Impact BC Scholarships in Healthcare Research and Development. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Angela and Bill. And I'm going to go off book here, Lubna, so um, just a little bit. Uh, I, I have, I've had the great pleasure of working alongside um, Jory and just want to let him know he truly did change my heart too, uh, as well as uh, with the students. So it was such a pleasure to be part of that nomination package and you are so deserving of this incredible um, award. So now moving on, um, as uh, Angela mentioned, I'm here to present the Professor Jesse Gordon McCarthy Memorial Scholarship, which recognizes a student in their final year of any UBC Health program who best combines academic excellence, demonstrated interest and leadership in the field of community and or population health. The scholarship was established through an endowment in memory of Jesse Gordon McCarthy, a longtime contributor to the development of health sciences at UBC. Uh, the 2022 recipient is Daniel Busayong, who's joining us on the, the screen today. Welcome, uh, Daniel. So I'll speak a little bit about you before we uh, applaud you. Uh, Danielle is a second year student in the Master of Science program in Speech Language Pathology in the School of Audiology and Speech Sciences in the Faculty of Medicine. <laughs> uh, she was recognized for her leadership in community health through her contributions to equity, diversity, inclusivity, and social justice. She developed a guide for speech language pathologists to utilize First Voices, an online resource for Indigenous languages. She established a summer language program for underserved populations at Strathcona Community Centre in Vancouver that addressed inclusivity in a language-rich environment in the community. In addition, because she's got lots of free time doing her Masters of Speech-Language Pathology, Danielle runs a social media account that focuses on sharing knowledge in the field of speech-language pathology through equity, diversity, inclusivity, and social justice lenses. 
Among her accomplishments, oh, it keeps going, Danielle, my goodness. She also serves on the board of directors for the Speech, Language, and Audiology of Canada uh, Association. Congratulations, Danielle. Well deserved. Uh, next, it gives me great pleasure to present the Impact BC Scholarships in Healthcare Research and, and Development. These scholarships recognize outstanding students in a UBC health discipline who have completed a research or development project focusing on patient client involvement in healthcare decision making or in health professional education. The scholarships were established through an endowment by Impact BC. This year we have three recipients. I'm pleased to award the first Impact BC scholarship to Aminder Du. Aminder is a third year student in entry to practice um, doctor of pharmacy program in the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences. She was involved in a health advocacy project to assess the integration of a novel health advocacy workshop into the pharmacy curriculum. She assisted with evaluating the impact of the workshop on student conceptualization and enactment of health advocacy in practice. The project intended to ensure health professional students received educational material that was effective in instilling professional knowledge and core healthcare competencies. It helped advance healthcare improvement um, by evaluating new material to address a perceived gap in health education and enabling students to better understand and recognize health advocacy opportunities to promote and improve patient-centered care. Congratulations, Amninder. I'm also pleased to award an Impact BC scholarship to Simroop uh, Ladhar. Simroop is a third year student in the Entry to Practice Doctor of Pharmacy program in the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences. She was involved in a research project that evaluated the quality and readability of online written heart failure medication resources available to people living with heart failure. She assisted with research protocol design, data collection and analysis, and manuscript development. Results found that most resources were of acceptable educational quality, but could be improved, including reading grade level to reduce limitations in utility for people with lower literacy. The project highlighted the importance of patient engagement and the need to develop more patient-friendly heart failure medication resources. This research could also be used as a guideline for creating patient-friendly resources for other chronic conditions. Congratulations, Simru. And finally, I'm pleased to award an Impact BC scholarship to uh, Leora Pearl Dowler. Leora is a second year student in the Doctor of Medicine program in the Faculty of Medicine. She was part of a research project that engaged families of children across the developmental spectrum in the co-development of a platform for in-home data collection, which offers researchers an opportunity to collect longitudinal data that is more representative of how patients function in their daily lives. Leora helped conduct, transcribe, and analyze patient and family interviews, collaboratively developed recommendations for future phases of research, and contributed to manuscript preparation. The new platform will enable underrepresented, underrepresented populations to participate in research, facilitate the integration of research and clinical care, and enable patients to take an active role in their health. Leora wasn't able to join us today, so we send our congratulations along to her. Now I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Christy Newton back to the podium to present the John F. McCreary Prize for Interprofessional Teamwork. Um, I absolutely love, as a visual learner, the idea of the circle, the square, and the triangle, um, and how those perspectives from the same object, right? And, and that's exactly how we at UBC Health are trying to bring the health professions at UBC together to really um, think about those different perspectives and how do, I, I, I used to say the phrase how do we circle that square or square that circle and I perhaps I don't need to do that anymore. Um, the other off script comment is uh, I have an ABBA song going through my head right now, take a chance on me. <laughs> um, and it's going to be stuck in my head for a little bit. Um, so unless somebody wants to sing Pink Panther. Um, Okay, thank you, Donna. Um, so I now have the pleasure of uh, 
introducing uh, the McCreary Prize. So the John F. McCreary Prize for Interprofessional Teamwork was created to recognize and promote interprofessional teamwork in the health and human service professions. Named after John F. McCreary, the first coordinator of health sciences at UBC, the award is intended to draw attention to Dr. McCreary's vision of interprofessional collaboration in clinical work and education and the value of a team approach in meeting the healthcare needs of British Columbians. The 2022 recipient is the Independence Model Team at St. Paul's Hospital at Providence Healthcare. The Independence Model is a pilot designed to address functional deterioration in hospital. An interdisciplinary team of a lead rehabilitation therapist, rehabilitation assistants, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, speech language pathologists, and nurses work collaboratively to deliver care focusing on mobilization, communication, swallowing, cognition, and overall function to help patients maintain independence, stay safe, build confidence, and return home sooner. The independence model has shown exemplary interprofessional teamwork by using communication and education strategies to target specific disciplines and increase patient referrals, identifying gaps in training, strengthening areas for supervision, and encouraging interdisciplinary relationships to ensure the focus is early holistic reactivation and prevention. So congratulations to the independence model team. And I'd like to invite, I believe, the team lead, Indishni Pele. Ah. Uh, to accept the award and say a few words. So a uh, quick thank you to UBC for recognizing us for this award. It, uh, it is really a team approach that is founded on interprofessional teamwork. Um, the award means a great deal to us because we do think that that kind of teamwork is what's going to transform healthcare in the future. You know, it's interesting. I've been a speech pathologist for a long time. When I was in doing my master's, they talked about teamwork. They talked about working together. And interesting enough, when I practice, we're still in silos. The TIM model is about bringing people together so that we surround the patient and provide the care in a very holistic way. Tim's story started about a year ago when I was sitting in an office with a physiotherapist, Sandra Squire, and our boss was really scared at the time because putting us together was like, she said, two wild horses, I think. Um, we, we are so passionate about healthcare. We've been, I think, cumulatively about 60 years of practice together. And we wanted to think outside the box. And part of the reason that we had to do that was we had no staff. COVID had hit. After COVID, you've heard about the great resignation. Well, lo and behold, we couldn't find physios. We were struggling to find OTs and speech pathologists. And we still had patients who needed, needed us and they needed the care. Um, so we, decided, well, let's go and do a little bit of research because surely there must be something out there in the literature that we could learn from. And we did find mobility programs in Alberta. We found a lot of um, programs that could help us, but there was nobody looking holistically at the patient. Mobility, eating, using the toilet, uh, caring for themselves. And so we created TIM, the independence model. Um, we engaged our interdisciplinary team, so nurses, physicians, rehab therapists, social workers, dietitians, to really develop a, a new model of care. And the focus of this model was to prevent functional de decline. So you know the patient who comes in, they come in for COPD, uh, they're an elderly patient, now they're sitting in bed for weeks and weeks at a time, and all of a sudden we go to discharge them home and they can't walk. So that's what we were after. Um, the model looks at using rehabilitation assistants that are guided by a therapy lead on our medicine program. 
Now, for those of you that don't know, um, the medicine program at Providence Healthcare is sort of a, a, an area where you get a multitude of, of disorders and um, medical conditions. So they're really struggling to meet the needs of patients. And so we wanted to start there because they really did need help. And our goal was really to promote function from day one. That patient who was going to sit in bed, we wanted to make sure they got up, we wanted to make sure they used the toilet, that they cleaned their face, that they were encouraged to do it. And rehabilitation brings a different lens to it. We could have hired more care aides, but I think that's a different approach. Care aides will do it for the patient. That's important for certain people people, but a rehab assistant is encouraging the patient to do it for themselves. And that was a key concept for the model. We very quickly hired four rehabilitation assistants, and um, we have some amazing rehab assists joining us here today. We've got Bryce Martin and Sarah Murphy and Michelle Bronson. And as we, we launched the model and it fell flat on its face. And Part of the reason was because we realized we needed a therapy lead. So we added a therapy lead to the program and it took off. Um, we were fortunate to hire uh, Eduardo Naranjo and as a PT as a therapy lead, and then Larissa James shortly after, as a, who's an OT background. Um, the results and feedback for Tim um, from the interdisciplinary team and from patients has been phenomenal. In the course of a year, uh, Tim Rehab Assistants saw 1,033 patients. They provided 5,456 hours of direct care. This is work that wouldn't have been done before the program. In a recent staff survey, our staff are telling us 76% said, I'm more focused on my caseload. 86% said that they were satisfied with this new model of care. And 83% said their patients were better prepared for going home. Um, our patients are telling us that Tim is helping them to use the bathroom, to help eat, to shower, and to be discharged um, more safely. As a result, we've expanded the TIM program recently um, onto the surgical ward at Providence. And we are now also being asked to help patients with delirium and to prevent our post-surgical patients from becoming delirious. Um, we also just recently heard that the TIM model is now being expanded to uh, Lionsgate Hospital and Fraser Health. And we're thrilled about that. So thank you again on behalf of our amazing team. It's been uh, truly inspiring to hear about the accomplishments of faculty members, students, community educators, who have all one ultimate goal to improve the health and well being of people across British Columbia. Whether teaching and mentoring trainees, conducting innovative health research, or providing invaluable patient perspectives, each of our award recipients today embodies the spirit of collaboration and dedication in advancing health education, practice, and research. Congratulations to each of you on your achievements and thank you for your commitment and contributions to making a difference. Together, we are improving education, we are advancing research, and we are enhancing health. And before I close, I have some additional words of thanks. Um, I know Dermot did say a thank you at the beginning, but I have not had the opportunity. So this event would not have been possible without the generosity of time and engagement of members of the UBC Health Awards Committee. I'd like to thank Laura Boyd, Donna Dryden, Jasper Huang, Larry Young, Lalanya Lloyd, and Marie Tarrant 
for their dedication and invaluable contributions to the 2022 UBC Health Awards and Scholarship Adjudication process. And I think it was mentioned there are hundreds of pages and they are fascinating to read through because these are incredible people. Um, I'd also like to take a moment to thank our UBC Health team for organizing this special event. Uh, in particular, uh, Susanna, Lubna, Dagoberto, and Dorim. Uh, I'd also like to thank the entire UBC Health team for their contributions every day. Um, as many of you know, I have a couple of jobs that I hold down. Um, and without the team, um, I would not be able to do that. Um, the team has been amazing since Anne has stepped down and I've taken on the interim role. Um, so I'd like the team to stand up if we could, just to put some faces to your names, please. I see a table full of them. Don't be shy. I know you're not. Thank you. And finally, I'd like to invite all of the recipients up to the front for a group photo. Um, and that's the end of our show. Please continue to enjoy the refreshments. Um, and on behalf of Dr. Kelleher and the UBC Health team, thank you um, and enjoy the evening. <laughs>